yeah. Well, I must say it's not easy to do this. I mean, I've recorded a few video videos already, and well, let's just say there are things which happening, which might happen in your life, which are well unusual. Uh, other people do not experience those. But, yeah, you can't really talk about it, but you have to, because you cannot keep everything inside. And, well, I have one of those issues. Uh, I could ask specifically to record this video to clarify a few things, uh, talk about some matters. Um, it's... Yeah, where to start basically. It's been about f well, four years since I started talking about an issue in public. My issue being, well, something unusual, not something easily to relate to, I think. But Issues is to just get started with, I guess. Um, <laughs> I well, problem is that the moment I start talking about it, it gets quite emotional. So <laughs> the problem is that uh, well, I was born in a different way. Not well, not a birth defect. I would not call it like that. Uh, what? The way I was born is more that, well, I am a twin in a single body, basically. Two embryos decided to merge in the womb, and one was male, one was female, and I am both. I am hermaphrodite. Special, not something, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's not something you see often. Um, I'm quite rare. <laughs> I'm unique almost. It shouldn't be too hard to deal with that. But uh, what happened to me after that? Well, first of all, I was raised as a boy. I started off with a male name here in the Netherlands. And it took 21 years before I realized on my own what was going on. That from that moment on, back in 2005, uh, I thought, well, now I'm getting the help, and I finally understand what's going on with me, and things will be fine. It has taken me seven years to realize why the Netherlands has not helped me on any point. The, the acronym for its, for the problem is uh, DSD, which stands for Disorder of Sexual Development. Yes, um, my condition is being acknowledged in the Netherlands, recognized as a birth defect. So there was never any inclination to examine my condition, tell me how the body was put together. The only option I got was SRS, Sex Reassignment Surgery. And I was basically offered the option to transition to male or female. Yeah. To accomplish that, because I had no inclination to go that route, for me it was important to learn how my body is put together. So I wanted examinations, I wanted to know uh, what is my body like. And they thought I should be coaxed into accepting that I was had to be transsexual. So they falsified medical reports, number of MRI scans that we made, one in Germany, in Germany back in 2007, 2008, with secondary opinion. Two clinics have, have acknowledged that I am a hermaphrodite in the Netherlands. They systematically denied that. 
Um, just over a month ago, I have been to Germany for a surgery, during which was discovered that what I had in terms of, well, testicles, parent really testicles, just underdeveloped. Not quite ovaries, not quite um, testicles, quite, yeah, undeveloped tissue mostly. I also have a vagina which is underdeveloped and well I have a something which is like a penis but it's not. I have a prostate which is also underdeveloped so it's not quite a prostate and I don't really have much really because uh, both sides, male and female, never fully developed from either side and that's how I ended up and that's what the Netherlands did not want to tell me. I've been three, four, maybe five even uh, MRI reports here in the Netherlands which say that there is nothing special to be seen even though the surgeon in Germany easily saw it and also other clinics as well and there was also a mosaic test performed in the Netherlands using one tissue which is not even realistic but that's just how it went and I've wasted seven years of my life um, on something completely futile. I am trying to prepare a lawsuit against those hospitals at the moment because I have to do something with those seven years. My intention is to use these seven years, my experiences, to sue those, those hospitals show the world via media the true face of the Netherlands because what what's happened here is not it's, it's not unique um, it's common for intersex people like me to be treated that way to be forced basically into surgery even worse uh, intersex children infants what a month has birth they if it's if they have an external externally visible uh, yeah, defect. They received genital surgery about a month after birth. This is risky, which is not not very nice for a child. And usually, the, well, all too often the choice is wrong because they pick male and that child grows up feeling more female. But sadly, a lot of things have been removed permanently. That's why lots, if not most, transsexuals are actually intersex. It's, well, it falls under a crime against humanity, you could say. Because it's, it takes away our decision, our right to decide um, about our own bodies. We should know, we have the right to decide what our body should be like. What would make us happy? Not physicians, not our parents, just us. There is no reason why this should not happen and yeah, that's what I'm trying to accomplish. That's what I'm going to try and accomplish. That's also why I uh, joined the Google Plus community of social network. I mean, um, to connect to find uh, allies, to also to escape my situation a bit because um, I haven't made any friends, I haven't socialized during those um, seven years and before that didn't work either because I've always been stuck in between male and female and I didn't fit anywhere. It's been it's been lonely, it's still lonely, and I'm really sick of it. <laughs> uh, Google Plus, of course, I mean, it's... The nice part is that it's the internet, it's uh, it's large, it's... Uh, you, you can connect to people you otherwise would never talk to, you can communicate things which are otherwise hard to communicate. And... It's... It, it, I mean, I've been on Google Plus for a few months now, and on yesterday it actually 
I actually found the right people. It's uh, people with the right connections were able to um, to communicate with others who might be able to help my cause. It's yeah, it's, it's not easy. It's not like you just arrive there, you post something on Google Plus, and it's like oh well, everything will be fine. If only. <laughs> That's not how it works, uh, sadly. But after yesterday, when I uh, ended up in a hangout, or got invited to a hangout with a few really nice people, who have the right connections, who know people, they managed to share uh, my previous um, uh, blog video. And it's most people just don't seem to realize when there is something. In, first of all, if, if I if I if people see me, they do not think oh that person has an issue. And on Google Plus, it's even harder normally in text written uh, fashion. You cannot see that person has an issue. If you look at me, I don't have an issue except that I cry a lot. And if you ask about well, my past is a bit weird because for uh, well, officially I'm still male, <laughs> and that doesn't really work. It's humiliating to identify myself officially. I've had a uh, past with a few people I've had. I mean, <laughs> not even transsexuals uh, experience something this. Yeah, because you don't fit into the, the binary male female system. I mean, transsexuals this transition between those. That's quite straightforward, easy for people to accept what I'm going through. I don't even understand, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, I have tried to um, I have to try to, to create context on Google Plus. There are a lot of people who are influential, but they just aren't social. I mean yeah it's a social network but doesn't mean that all people on there are social. It's yeah it's society. It's, it's, I mean, just like in real life, you've got people who are totally caring, you've got total jerks, assholes, and worse. I mean, I have tried to. Well, a lot of people on the Google Plus have ignored my requests for help. So that's why it took a while, a few months before it actually. And people don't see that I have an issue except, well. <coughs> They were probably like, oh, that girl is just crying and uh, talking about suicide again, and yeah, they don't know. So it, it is hard to actually make it clear that something is going on. Just like I just learned today that someone I've been seeing around the Google Plus for a few months actually is, well, dying. I didn't know. So yeah, uh, after you have had a stack of people, the bitches and other people who think they are way too important, well they do not really contribute to the community, then you find the real people who are actually nice, who, uh, who, who realize the problem, because it's not just me, I mean, as far as I know, I'm the only person who actually is, is really trying to break this issue open like this. I haven't found any others yet. I mean, all those are trying to do it in their own ways, but I, th I think this requires a lot of force, a lot of power. And it, it really needs to be broken open because a lot of people do not understand uh, the gravity of this problem and the extent of it. Because, uh, like, Yesterday when he was in this hangout with those nice people, one of them realized after a um, bit of googling and researching that there are tens if not hundreds of millions of people in this world who are into sex and who are suffering things similar uh, to what I've gone through just because they are born a certain way that's unforgivable, I think. 
and I hope that starting with the Google Plus community, things spread to other um, social networks, and from there, maybe into the media and who knows what else. That's it would be a very nice demonstration of how a revolution can start on the internet. How the situation for millions of people can be improved and how we can finally progress a bit in society thanks to a very social social network. That's the intention I guess. And I really hope it's going to work.